Hi everyone, welcome to the video on enthalpy. This is the third video in our thermochemistry unit. To start off, I want you to think about all of the chemical and physical processes that you might see every day in your life. Uh, maybe if you're outside, you see um, photosynthesis. Well, you don't see it, but the trees and the plants um, are alive because of photosynthesis. Um, many chemical and physical processes result in absorption or release of heat and can also be accompanied by work that is done on or by the system. So thinking about work, we've already talked about work as force times distance. So you're doing a f um, some force on an object, um, pushing it, pulling it um, over some distance. That's in terms of physics. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on uh, work in terms of gases. So the work that we usually focus on in chemistry is related to gases and the work that's associated with that. And that has to do with pressure and volume. So usually when we look at a container, um, the work that's being done is either by the gas pushing on the surroundings or the surroundings pushing on the gas. So that's the way that work is done. So work is being done by expanding or compressing the gas and because it's a gas we focus on pressure and we focus on volume so this is known as pressure volume work or PV work um, we can actually measure the work that's done by the gas um, because we focus on the pressure and we focus on the change in volume so the reason that it's just P and not delta P is because this is assuming that pressure is constant so in order for us to use this equation, pressure has to be constant. Um, I would recommend um, reading the uh, A Closer Look section on page 178. That talks more about pressure volume work, um, goes a little more in depth. So make sure you look at that. Again, it's page 178. So here we have work equals negative pressure times delta V. So we're focusing on the pressure and the change in volume. Um, the reason that we have this negative is to kind of offset um, what it means for work to be done on the system or on the surroundings. Um, when a gas expands, the system is doing work on the surroundings, right? The gas is pushing on the surroundings as it expands. So because the system is doing work, W is negative. So this is to take into account the type of work that's being done and how that would affect your change in volume. Um, and so this is the work that we're going to focus on, and this is going to be useful when we're looking at enthalpy. So what we need is we need to focus on a state function that relates to heat flow. Uh, we looked at internal energy, we've looked at work, um, but what we want to do is focus on heat flow because it's easy for us to measure heat. So if a process takes place at constant pressure, and most processes that we look at um, take place at constant pressure, um, we can actually account for heat flow by measuring the enthalpy of the system. Um, enthalpy, which is represented by the letter H, is the internal energy plus pressure times volume. So it's taking into account um, the internal energy, pressure, and volume. So again, this is enthalpy. Um, notice that E is a state function as well as pressure and volume. Therefore, H is also a state function. So we're going to look at actually deriving enthalpy. Um, so when the system changes at constant pressure, the change in enthalpy, which is delta H, can be written as this, okay? delta E plus P delta V because pressure is constant, so we're not going to be finding a change in pressure. Since delta E, which is internal energy, is equal to Q plus W, and W is equal to negative P delta V, we can actually substitute these into the enthalpy expression, and after simplifying, we find that delta H equals Q. Now the reason that there's this um, subscript of a P is because it means constant pressure. So we actually have delta H equals Q. So at constant pressure, the change in enthalpy is equal to the heat that is gained or lost. So we can think of change in enthalpy, or delta H, as the heat of the reaction. 
So we use delta H to describe chemical reactions because most reactions happen at constant pressure. So it's easy for us to measure or calculate delta H. Um, that makes it much more useful than delta E, than internal energy. Um, and so it's also nice because delta H is equal to Q and Q is relatively easy to find. Um, often for chemical reactions, um, P delta V is very small, so we actually ignore it. And the internal energy is usually equal to delta H. Um, delta H is now going to be much more useful for us, so we're not really going to be looking at internal energy much anymore. We're going to be focusing our attention now to delta H. So with looking at delta H, I want to bring it back to something that we looked at in the last video, and that's endothermic and exothermic reactions. So think again of delta H as heat. So if um, delta H is positive, it's endothermic, right? Heat is being absorbed. Um, the phase changes that are associated with an endothermic reaction is going from solid to liquid to gas. Um, or from solid to gas. And the reason being is, think about the particles themselves. So as a solid, they're just barely vibrating in place. And then to get to a gas, they have to start to speed up. Well, to speed up, they have to absorb energy. That's why it's an endothermic process. Um, something is exothermic if delta H is negative, so the system releases heat. Um, and these phase changes that are associated with this is gas to liquid to solid. So like a gas to liquid or a liquid to solid because your particles are moving really fast and then they have to slow down. So if they have to slow down, they have to release heat. So the change in enthalpy, which is delta H, can be calculated by taking the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants. So this gives us kind of an idea on what we can look at. So here are our reactants, here are the products. To find delta H, we take reactants minus products, and that will actually get us our delta H value. Um, delta H depends on state of matter. So enthalpy of a gas is different than enthalpy of a solid. So it's very, very important that you label all of your states of matter in your equation. So delta H um, is enthalpy. This is also called enthalpy of reaction or the heat of reaction. Um, this is going to be really important because we're going to start doing a lot more with delta H. So you can actually see it written as delta H and then RxN. That's abbreviated um, for reaction. So reaction can be abbreviated RxN. Um, so delta H, Rxn, that's heat of reaction. Now, a lot of times down here, oh, that's supposed to be a triangle, right? So delta H equals, you know, something um, like negative 500. All right, so let's say this is negative 500 kilojoules. Um, when you have a balanced equation with the associated enthalpy change, this entire thing is called a thermochemical equation. So if you have this balanced equation with the delta H, this is a thermochemical equation. This is going to be very, very useful when we get into Hess's law. So some guidelines to help with enthalpy. Um, the first, enthalpy is an extensive property. That means it depends on the amount of substance that we have. For example, in this reaction, we have one mole of methane burning with two moles of oxygen. When you burn one mole of methane, you release 890 kilojoules. Right? Notice it's negative, it's exothermic. So you release 890 kilojoules. Now, if I wanted to change this to two moles of methane, if I want to multiply everything in the equation by two, I will also multiply delta H by two. So if instead of burning one mole here, I want to burn two, I'm going to multiply this by two, and I'm going to get close to 1,800 kilojoules released. A delta H for a reaction in the forward direction is equal but opposite that of the reverse. So here is my forward reaction for burning methane. 
if I wanted the reverse reaction, okay, if I wanted to just flip the arrow, what I would do then is I would flip my sine of delta H. So delta H, your thermochemical equations can actually be flipped as long as you're flipping the sine of delta H. And then finally, delta H for a reaction depends on the state of the products and the state of the reactants because the enthalpy for a gas is greater than the liquid and it's greater than a solid. Now, something else to make note of, maybe underneath this put a little asterisk or something, um, but we assume that we're at 25 degrees Celsius unless otherwise stated. So if you don't have a temperature, you're assuming that it's at 25 degrees Celsius. So now you might be saying, all right, so we looked at, you know, conceptually what enthalpy is, um, how we derive it, but now how do we actually calculate delta H? Well, there are two different ways that we can find it. We can find it experimentally, or we can actually calculate it using known delta H values of other reactions. So the first method is calorimetry. That's determining it experimentally. So we can either have constant pressure or constant volume calorimetry, or we can calculate delta H using Hess's law. And with this, we're going to be using known enthalpy changes of other reactions, and we would be adding them all together in order to come up with our delta H value. And these two methods are going to be focused on in the next video. That way there's more um, examples and you'll be able to kind of see everything in a little bit more detail. So these are the two methods you can use to find delta H. Um, we'll talk about other um, enthalpies later, but these are going to be the two big methods for now.